What do you say, everybody? And Roll Tide, uh, jumping on a little bit early here is Alabama salts away what is now a 59-10 to 10 lead over UTC. And, you know, th- these type of games, I figured we'd do kind of like a fourth quarter watch party and post game show. Um, but absolute domination, just what you would expect from Alabama in this football game. We'll take some calls. We'll start to talk the Iron Bowl. We'll hear from Nick Saban. Not going to be the longest show once the game's over and once we hear from Nick Saban. But I do want to hear from you guys as you watch the game uh, and jump on. But I'm Mick Gillespie. This is the original football tailgate YouTube channel. And um, we appreciate all you guys for being here. I had a fun time last night doing the show at Innisfree all year and then last night we were at unique on the strip like right in downtown tuscaloosa so that was a lot of fun but anyway welcome here thanks for hanging out and uh before we do anything else let's get this party started by asking you to like and subscribe give us a thumbs up and be part of the station All right, roll tight as we hang out. Uh, Caleb Downs might have taken the punt return job from Kool-Aid McKinstry, which I think that that's been the one thing we've been kind of seeing coming for a while. Kool-Aid fumbled again. He just isn't, he did not look like he was comfortable back there or he wanted to do it, one or the other. Uh, He fumbled another one today. They got the ball back, and then Downs came in and took one to the house. And he looked comfortable. He looked excited to do it. I just got to, I got to feel like with all the experience that Kool-Aid had, you know, maybe Downs is the guy in that position moving forward. Other than that, Jalen Milrow just looks like the guy. I mean, we knew he was the guy, but he just looks like it. He came in and just wasted no time in pounding Chattanooga down the field. Uh, Confident running the ball, throwing the ball. Let me put up the, um, the game cast just so you guys can keep an eye on it as this game you know, kind of ticks away here, but uh, another fine performance by Milrow. And every time we watch him, he's a little bit better than the time before. So that's really exciting to see. Milrow um, played the entire first half and then a little bit of the second half. And then um, Ty Simpson came in uh, Simpson 13 of 16 uh, for Milrow, uh, just under 200 yards, three touchdowns, no interception. And then uh, didn't we didn't see him run the ball a whole lot today. Milrow, uh, three carries for a yard. I don't think that was part of the game plan. Ty Simpson's actually been pretty good. Four of six, 50 yards. He had a carry for 78 yards. He dropped the football at the one-and-a-half yard line, going in for a touchdown. Should have just held on to it. And then, um, you know, the next play, Bama scored with Richard Young. We've gotten to see a lot of the running backs today. Jam Miller. From the very start, six carries, 77 yards. Chase McClellan, six carries, 62 yards and a touch. Roy Dell Williams, seven carries, 52 yards, touchdown. Justice Haynes, we're going to be saying this a lot. Justice Haynes had a touchdown today. He's going to score a lot of those in his career. Richard Young with a touchdown, good for him. So Bama pounding it in on the ground, four different guys with touchdowns in the contest. Uh, One of the worries that you have in this kind of game is injuries. But who would have thought that one of the worries that you would have in this game wouldn't be injuries. It would actually be targeting. Chris Braswell uh, left the game after basically killing the quarterback for Chattanooga. And you could tell that it was a speed issue. It was that Alabama's playing on a different level at a different speed than Chattanooga and um you know that that's tough when you're you know when you're going that fast to have to slow down and then looking at the replay you know he was obviously going to leave which was tough but at the same time you know it's it's one of those deals where you when you play a game like this and you know that the opposition isn't as fast then that you could have issues And, um, you know, and that was definitely part of it as well, you know, for him anyway. Um, So 
kind of where we are right now as this thing is uh, starting to tick away. So six minutes and 35 seconds left in the game. Bama's about to get the ball back again. Uh, you guys get into the comment section. Um, here's Garth. Says, uh, what's up, Miss? Uh, what's up, Mick? Not Miss. Miss Mick. That'd be me. Um, Mr. Mick. What's up? Uh, never miss any video or live. Man, appreciate you, brother. Really do. Um, Garth, we, you're right, man. We've been talking about the Kool-Aid thing. I, I got a group chat going with with uh with with Ryan Anderson and 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 Jake Coker. We talked about it on our other podcast, you know. Just it's a tough job. It is a tough job. I'm not making fun of Kool-Aid. I, I don't know that I'd want to do it either. But when you lose the nerve to do it, then all of a sudden you're distracted by getting hit, fumbling, or whatever it is, you can't do it anymore. And that feels like what Kool-Aid's going through right now. And so um we kept saying, well, who else is back there? Who's who's the other guy? Well, we saw it was Downs, and he and he took it to the house. So, uh, Garth, man, appreciate you. Um, a little bit early, so I'm glad that you kicked it on with us uh, to talk about this. Um, it's it's crazy to look at the way that this season has gone because um, I I really do feel like blowing out teams, which they would have blown out. UTC anyway, but going to Kentucky and 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 putting the beat down on the Cats, taking care of business against Auburn next week. You know, hopefully they don't struggle, and we have struggled there over the years. But style points, I really do believe, matter this year, just because of the situation that we have um, with you know, there's seven teams in front of Alabama. I know a couple of them are going to play, but. Between now and the end of the season, we got to clear that path. And if it does end up in a tie, you know, those games matter. You know, the style points matter. I mean, you know, cause, because you do a lot of stuff with the eye test. So you, you want to know if a team's better. Like, how are they dominating their competition? People are starting to to really question Texas right now. and And the reason why is because Texas is struggling every week. And I think that it's fair to say that Alabama has gotten past the uh, the struggles that they had at the beginning of the year, and they're becoming a really dominant team. And uh, you know, and I feel like the you know the kind of the rest of the of of college football, like Texas, teams are catching up with them. And you're going to see this when you um, you know when you lose your roster to the NFL, Bama lost the first and the third pick. You know what? Like you're going to have issues. You're going to have to replace guys. There's a learning curve here. You know, and I think that's what separates college football from the NFL. I mean, it, it does, you know, you don't have the same guys on your team for 20 years. You've got them for three or four years and that's it. Trey, I'm throwing you up right now. I'm in the Bama tailgate house. Hello, Mick. RTR. It's Auburn week. <laughs> now, damn it, it is. Brother, it is Auburn week right now. Well, in six minutes. But, you know, this is this is the game where all of those guys, and I see that Dylan Laudergan is in the game right now for Alabama. This is the, this is the time where all those guys that have been getting their ass beat on the on the practice teams and the third string get in and it's exciting for them so I'm glad that they're getting this opportunity um but they're going to tick this thing out and then all of a sudden we're going to be talking about uh about the Auburn Tigers and you got to love that I mean, it really is. the. This is the best week of the season to be an Alabama fan. I'm so I'm I'm jacked, man. I think Alabama's going to go in there and take care of business. I, I, I bet they I bet it's close at the beginning and then Bama runs them over. Uh, I really do. I It's just my gut feeling. But we're going to preview it all week. I mean, it's, you know, as as things get moving, I mean, we'll just continue to, you know, Keep watching it. I'm also going to take your calls. Um, 
Yeah, Frank jumped in. He just we talked about that already. Yeah, I think we. I, I, I think it's safe to say that Alabama had to make a move with, with the punt return. And I just, I just think it was one of those deals where you got to do it. Um, and I, I, I don't know. I mean, I don't know if what I've debated this. You guys have heard me. I've said, is it that he is afraid to get hurt because he's going to make a lot of money in the NFL? And that uh, is it that he's afraid to f- mess up? I mean, he doesn't want to fumble, you know, or does he not have the nerve anymore to try to catch the ball and run through traffic? You know, and I think all of those are legitimate questions. And I don't think there's, I, I, I wouldn't disrespect him at all if he was like, look, man, you know, I'm going to be a pretty high round pick and returning punts in college isn't something I want to do anymore. Or if he was like, hey, you know what? I, I just get worried that somebody's going to snap my neck when I'm running through that pot. I don't know. Because if you start to think that way, and, and you could almost see the thought process with Kool-Aid returning to kicks here the last, you know, this season really, that it, it, he just doesn't do it with the same vigor and um, um, excitement that he did in the past. I think Bama's going in again. I think they're back in the end zone again. Oh, yes, they are. Justice Haynes again. Nice big run for Haynes. So let's pull that out. Justice Haynes, man. The guy looks, he's wearing 22. He's got the Mark Ingram number. And he runs through the line and then kicks it. I mean, Chattanooga had no chance. But this is a guy who we're going to see do a lot of really cool stuff in that Alabama uniform before it's all said and done. It's really, really awesome. Well, here comes the extra point. I already added it on there. Maybe that's unfair to Will Reichert. And right down the middle. All right, so it is 66 to 10 with three minutes and 17 seconds left uh, as Alabama's onslaught continues. And now Will Reichert is, he's got 521. Keenan Reynolds has 530, the most NCAA points all time. I mean, he's going to hit that. He'll hit that hopefully down on the plains, which would be great. I mean, we don't want him kicking too many field goals down there. Uh, but that do you guys think, let me ask you this. Do you guys think that that if Alabama wins out, they're in? If they went out, they're not going to leave the SEC champ out. And I'm going to tell you what my situ- my thought process is. Let me go back to the Kool-Aid thing, though. Frank says, I think Kool-Aid lost his confidence. I don't think he was fearful. And uh, Haynes reminds me of M- Emmett Smith, another number 22. Kind of that low to the ground build and acceleration. Emmett Smith was one of the best running backs I've ever seen at waiting on blocks and then accelerating through them. You know, like, like basically using the blocks. It could be that he lost his confidence, uh, talking about Kool-Aid. Uh, but it's, it, I think it's all, they're all fair questions. Um, you know, I mean, what are you going to say? So Bama wins 10 games again. You think about all the stuff that this team accomplished going into the Iron Bowl. But just let's just kind of put it senior day, Tuscaloosa. There was a point of the season where I was wondering if the, this team was going to end up losing a lot. You know, start back at the beginning, and they they dominated Middle Tennessee, and then they lost to Texas. Even though they had the lead in the fourth quarter, the beginning of the fourth quarter, I never felt like that team had a legitimate offense. And so after that game, we go you you Milrow's out, and then we see Buckner, and we see. Simpson and both guys. Simpson was better than than Buckner, and Buckner was terrible. 
And so you're like, okay, it's, it's Milrow. He's our best chance. You know, and then you, you come back from that game and you're like, what, what are we going to see? You know, like what's going to happen? And I don't think anyone, I, I mean, there was so much debate on the message board. You know, a lot of people had reasons why one quarterback was better than the other and why, you know, like what was going on in the locker room and all of that stuff. And, and it's hard to tell what was true and what wasn't true. You know, I mean, like, it's just hard to say. And then Lane Kiffin tr- just trolling Nick Saban. And the, the Britney Spears comments. And uh, going into that week, I just thought, like, if you lose this game to that clown with the big mouth, it, like, what's going to happen? You're like, is this the way that the greatest dynasty in college football history is going to end? You're going to lose to Lane Kiffin, your former assistant that you fired because he was so immature, he couldn't do his job right? Oh, yeah, right, going into a national championship game? Like, and the guy still hasn't shut up yet? And I respect, like, I respect Kiffin's game calling and his he he's a football genius. But I guess get tired of all the, you know, the the mouth and all the other, the, the Joey Freshwater stuff, the off the field things, the comments. And, you know, you, you got what he's speaking out, you know, who's calling the defense and all of that shit. You lose to this guy. It's like, you, you can just, is this it? And then the second half of that game, it wasn't perfect, but it was, it was good. And so, okay, you win. And then looking back now, I mean, that was a really good win because that Ole Miss team's, you know, a tier under the top group of teams. You know, like the, I'd say the top eight teams. Somehow Bama's at the end of the lead pack still, like Dale Earnhardt, ready to make a move. But that that lead pack is a lot better than the Ole Miss pack. Pack and I think they're kind of at the the lead of the second group of teams. So then you got to go to Texas A and M, and you're going to play Jimbo Fisher. And Jimbo and Nick, you know, they're old West Virginia buddies. And a couple of years ago, Nick makes comments like, "Hey, man, you know, um, we got to get basically these guys. They're buying players. We're we're going to have to do the same thing type type feel." Jimbo calls him out. Hey, if you think this guy's God, which by the way, Bama's uh, taking a knee on this thing. Um, you know, I, I basically he was basically inferring that Nick cheats, and that you don't know, him. and that he was going to beat Alabama, and they beat Alabama. They beat Alabama two years ago, or three seasons ago now. Then last year it was a close game in Tuscaloosa. Now you got to go there. They're all fired up with all their weird chants and, you know, locking arms and everything else that they do. You still don't have a quarterback. And all of a sudden now Milrow's not running the ball, right? And you got you to figure out how you're going to get it done. And they got it done. And then fast forward, you got Tennessee coming to town. They beat you the year before. They play the half of the season. Then you just absolutely kick their ass in the second half. And then Jaden Daniels, who might win the Cy, uh, the Cy Young, might win the uh, wrong sport, might win the Heisman Trophy. And, and the odds say that he's going to. And he comes into town. There's no chance you're going to beat him. And all Jalen Milrow does is just outshine the guy who most likely is going to win the Heisman. Let me listen to Nick. Love seeing Nick. They've been saying Milro was 10 for 10. 
great job of executing and taking advantage of some of those explosive plays. You also got to see some younger guys in this game, including two. They're asking Nick about some of the younger players. We played a lot of players today. A lot of guys do a great job. They don't get much reinforcement sometimes in terms of playing time. So it's good to get a lot of guys an opportunity to play today. Coach, All right, so just basically right, Jaylen, you want to come same stuff. Same stuff that Coach always says, you know. But we got guys in. Milro played great. Thing about Coach Saban is if if I always get the feeling that if you get too high on yourself, he's going to bring you down. And if he feels like you need confidence, he's going to give you confidence. You know, and 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 that's what he's done with this team this year. He's found a way to complement those guys and build on the uh, basically on the success that they had uh, chief 18 wheels. What's up, brother? Uh, what did, what did I think about Ty Simpson? Thought he did well. I felt sorry for him when he dropped that football short of the goal line. I thought, man, this is not going to be fun for you. You know, like shit, you got to go in there and deal with coach Saban now. <laughs> I I was watching the replay and I'm still not a hundred percent sure he didn't get into the end zone, but with the score and the fact that no one picked the ball up, Bama luckily got it back and they scored and it didn't even really matter. I mean, they could have dropped the ball at the goal line 10, you know, 10 more times and they wouldn't have lost. So, all right, let's go to the phone lines. Let's start talking some Alabama football here. Who's this and where are you calling from? Hey, man, it's uh, Robert from Mobile. Robert, what's up, dude? You were right about the style points a few weeks ago. You're, you're getting your style points now. Oh, yeah. Um, Alabama's on a, a whole different level now. And as we all, everybody knows, no one wants to play Alabama right now. Um, and now, you know, now watching the so-called best team in college football, Michigan, according to a lot of analysts, <laughs> struggle. Uh, with uh, Maryland, okay, this late in the season, um, you should everything should be polished now. You shouldn't be struggling. The, the best team in the nation shouldn't be struggling <laughs> against Maryland this late in the season. Right. But all right, uh, we'll, yeah, we'll see if they're really better than Alabama, according to some of these analysts. <laughs> but yeah, uh, Miro, of course, was spot was uh, off the chain. He was, a, you know, the, the three misses he had were, you know, he could have hit. And uh, unfortunately, otherwise he'd had a perfect game because he was he was that close to a perfect game. And he was, the few misses he missed were you know gettable, but oh well, they were just a little off. But yeah, this is what you want to see: style points. Uh, you, you handle the, you handle a team like this that you should handle quickly and easily. No more struggles against teams like USF and then other teams like that. You you beat them, you, you get them done, and you out and you're out of there. But everyone's playing better now. Including, uh, you know, Ty Simpson looks like a whole different player from that USF game. I, I'm thinking, Chad Newman's not even better than USF. And you just wonder, how did we struggle? Uh, how did he, he look so bad against that team? But it looks good against Kentucky. looks good against Chattanooga. And, I mean, it's just everybody's different. Against the game slowing down for both him and Milro now. And the offensive line. Yeah. Uh, the offensive line, uh, it's just, Carrot is just it's another level now. It's we're finally starting to see these guys. You know, at the beginning of the year, we were almost getting the, I was almost getting mad. But I don't want you to tell me how big these guys are Mm-mm. when I'm watching my quarterback run for his life. I want you to tell me how big these guys are when my running backs don't get hold. Now you can tell me how big these guys are. They're starting to look that big. Yeah. They're starting to play that big. Yeah. They're, they're, start, they're starting to open holes for the running back. Milro and Ty Simpson are not running for their lives every time. And Ty Simpson is no statue in that pocket. That was some serious speed on that run. Mm-hmm. I mean, it, you know, that was impressive. Yeah, I, I'm with you. I mean, I felt sorry for him because when he fumbled the football, I'm like, man, you got to go back in there and Saban's going to Saban's gonna chew your ass <laughs> out. But you know what? Like, I was with you. Like, it, it it's good to see him improving. And you can see that, that these guys are figuring out the Tommy Reese offense. And that they're a lot more confident in the things that they need to do to be successful. Exactly. You know, the Odell Saban's good, bad, and ugly that he shows during the uh, 
the, uh, during after every game. I think the other is going to be that dropping the ball before you cross the goal line. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, you, you you just felt in his heart how 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 uh, bad he felt when you can see on the sideline all the players. You know, patting him on the back and all, and all that. It's going to be all right, dude. Okay, it's not the end of the world. We, we fortunately, no one uh, recovered the ball uh, on the on the uh, Chattanooga side either. So we got lucky there, and the ball just sat there until the referee finally blew the whistle. But it's a uh, yeah, classic mistake. You know, uh, dropping that ball before you go across the goal line. How many times have we seen that? It's just, and it's the worst part is. If, you know, <laughs> The player looks feel stupid after doing it because, well, yeah, that's pretty much a bonehead to play. Yeah. But other than that, he's uh, his confidence is definitely growing, and that's great to see. The whole team's confidence is growing. I, I, and every and every week I see us being able to beat Georgia. And once again, if we're ready to win the national championship, the voodoo dolls and the witch doctors in Auburn will just have will just be their spells will not work. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And the, their dolls will just uh, turn on them. The voodoo's not going to work this season. Auburn should be put away, uh, you know, maybe not, not as quick as this team, of course, but we, but it should be a double-digit win. I mean, I'm, I'm talking fifth, uh, between 14 and 20 points uh, win against Auburn. If, you know, we, if this team is really dialed in and really ready to go, we'd be, we, we run away from Auburn. Uh, the the mid-third quarter, yeah, uh, Jordan here starts to clear out. Yeah, that's what I'm looking for. Me too. I think I think it's going to be a little bit close at first, and then we're going to whoop their ass. I just think it's coming. Man, I might be wrong, but uh, I, I, I'm with you, man. I think it's coming. Since we've that bad. I just like yeah, it's a this, 2011 since we've been that bad. Yeah, I mean it's been a long time, but I, I this team they are just at that point now where they've turned the corner and they just don't show mercy anymore. I mean, like they, they're just going to keep on beating you and they, they're not perfect. You know, uh, what did you think about Kool-Aid's fumble and then Caleb Downs coming in there and returning kicks? I thought that was significant. Is it, and is that something that we're going to see against Auburn? Do you think that coach Saban would feel confident in Downs back there? Or do you think it's going to be Kool-Aid still? I think Down should be the guy. Um, I mean, he, he was his judgment was a little off on some of those balls. He uh, overstepped them a bit, and he had to, but he had to come back to catch it. You know, he had to turn himself around to catch it, uh, but he, but he turned himself around. And he caught it, and he can make big plays. Did uh, he show he can make a big play on the on the return? Uh, Kool Aid, I'm not sure what they, would happen with him and his confidence, but it's gone. Which I mean, okay, dude, that's not your primary job, so. You know, I mean, you're a great uh, defensive player, and you're getting the NFL as a defensive player. It'd be great to be able to, to do duels, to be a uh, punt returner too. Yeah, but oh well, you don't have to be. And, yeah, I think I think that's significant. It's kind of we're back to okay, what took so long then? Why did it take so long for us to see down in there? Why didn't you try him sooner? Um, you put him in there, so you had to have known. He had some skills to be a punt return. Right. Why did we have to uh, get some fumbles and some uh, miscues from Kool Aid? Uh, some of the missed Kool Aid before Downs got there. But oh well, like, like I said, it's why do it's you the, think the, turn, that? the coin has been turned on that too? Do you think that Saban was just trying uh, to be patient with Kool Aid? Yes. Well, he's you know Nick Saban's loyal to a fault. Uh, you know, to a lot of his older players. That's yeah, he's been that way since he's been there, and that's how he is. Yeah. The first nod always goes to the start, to the guy who's been there a little longer. Yeah. And uh, it, it's all he is. Uh, sometimes to our detriment, sometimes to the team's detriment, he does that. Uh, you know, okay, you may realize a little too late that maybe you need to start this other guy. But, okay, we turn the corner. So, it's, I, yeah, I think Downs is the guy from now on. Yeah, me too. And I, I just, like I said, I feel like, going into this game against Auburn. It's going to be tough. It's going to be loud down there, but these guys are ready for it. I feel like that this this team, this is the final test where they're going into an atmosphere that's going to be total mayhem against them. Uh, that game in Atlanta against Georgia, I think it's going to be split. And I, I think Alabama fans are ready to go beat Georgia. I think they're ready to make a lot of noise in that yeah. dome. 
And uh, I think we're all kind of sick and tired of, uh, of, of, of everybody talking about Georgia. I, I, I'm ready for Alabama to, to, to kind of go in there and show them who Alabama is again. No, absolutely. Uh, yeah, absolutely. I, and, I mean, that's on the table. It'll be all for all the marbles. You win and you're in the playoff type scenario. I know we ain't quite there yet with Alabama controlling its own destiny. Uh, but uh, I think we might get that chaos today with Washington and uh, and uh, Oregon State. So hopefully we'll get that going for us. Maybe Texas will get upset. Yeah. So maybe we'll get that going for us. But, yeah, it'll, yeah, I think by the time the SC championship comes along, I think it will be the old win and you're in. And it's unfortunate how it's going to turn out that the two best teams in college football uh, we'll, we'll be playing in the SEC championship game, and only one of them can go to the playoffs. Right. Well, but this year's the last year be. of that. But you were the first guy that kind of called up, and Chad, you know, when Chad was on, he was like, ah, he didn't he didn't agree with you, and he didn't agree with me because I agree with you, and I've actually talked about it a lot, where I feel like you said, hey, you know what? Style points matter this year, and I think they do matter this year. I think it matters because you if, if it ends up in – we have never seen anything like this before where everyone is there's eight there's seven teams ahead of Alabama right now and I'm with you I think Alabama's either the best or the second best team in the country I don't care what the record is or or isn't they they just are right now and they'll prove that um yeah. but at the same time you know if it comes down to you know three undefeated and then they're deciding between Texas and uh, or you know two undefeated, and they're deciding between Texas and Alabama. For Alabama to pass Texas, Texas say they win, but they keep struggling, and Alabama's blowing these teams out, and then they beat Georgia. That that little nudge right. w- is what could get them there, to me. And Oregon, and Oregon too. Well, we, if, but, they need to yeah those style points over Oregon. But see, I think that if it ends up yeah, being yeah, yeah, this is my feel, Robert. You tell me, but I feel like. If it's three undefeated, let's just say it's Michigan and it's um, Washington and Florida State. And then all of a sudden it's Alabama and Texas. The only way Alabama's getting it is if Texas keeps struggling, they barely win in Alabama, takes kicks the shit out of Auburn, you know, goes in and beats Georgia. And they're like, man, we, we just can't keep Alabama out. I mean, they're just better. Now, to me, if if Oregon wins and there's three one loss teams that are conference champs, I think it's easier for the committee to jump Texas with Alabama mm-hmm. because they could make Alabama the team that's ahead of Oregon and keep Texas out. So it'd be like, well, Alabama's not only ahead, they're ahead of both of the one loss teams. And then all of a sudden you make the debate about Oregon and Texas. Exactly, like exactly, and and that's where those style points are going to come to, are going to come into play. Yeah, uh, if it comes to between us, Oregon, and uh, us, Oregon, and Texas, you the only separate uh, separating factor is going to be those style points uh, that we accumulated and beating Georgia. Yeah, now I know your friend like to say, "Well, just beating Georgia is enough." Uh, what do you, I'm not so. I, I like to be beating Georgia and have my style points too. Let me just put it that way. <laughs> Maybe beating Georgia is enough. Yeah. But I feel a lot more confident with those style points and beating Georgia. Well and the team, and, and the team needs to jail that much. They yeah. need to kind of jail with be, the team. It, they're gonna be it's gonna be tough. It it is gonna be tough to to scrap up some style points when you're trying to beat a team that's as good as them, you know. I mean but I, we could do it. I mean, oh, yeah. who knows? You know, who knows what happens? I mean, next week's Auburn, and I, I'm always cautious, and I respect Auburn and their the voodoo that they have there. But like you said, man, I just don't think that this is going to be one of those years where we're going to go in there and struggle. I just don't. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm yeah, I'm at the style points against other teams. No, we're not going. No, you don't need style points against Georgia. No, just straight just up beat win. Them. Yeah, that's just beating Georgia. It's it, it, that's your style. You beat Georgia by a half a point. <laughs> that, that's all. That, that's all required. You beat the best. You beat the best team in college football. I mean, against the uh, other opponents that we have that we've been uh, beating uh, along the way. I think it was for us. What we got? We, we dropped two number ele- uh, low eleven because we struggled against USF. I know it wasn't just losing to Texas. It was losing Texas and then struggling the next weekend after that. 
you yeah. know, that, you know, not getting style points the week after that. So that's where, where it hurts you. Okay, the, the teams you're supposed to be mopping up the floor with, you better start mopping up the floor with. Yeah, and they're that's doing where it. we are right now. But yeah, I'll let somebody else talk. Great game. Yeah, great game. It was great to see all those uh, guys get in. All right, man. Hey, always great to hear from you, Robert. You're my first All American on my uh, on my new on my new channel here, man. Roll Tide. So Robert from Mobile, uh, longtime caller to the show. Um, great to have him over here. If any of you guys want to get in, we're waiting on Nick Saban. Now we got to hear what the uh, what the goat has to say. Um, you know, because now it's time to talk about Auburn. I want to hear what he thinks about the. Uh, you know, obviously we all want to hear what he thinks about Kool Aid. You know, and I think that's going to be an interesting topic, too, um, because they're going to ask him. You know, the other thing is, um, you know, now it's it's Iron Bowl week. And I, I remember Saban's first year and he was like, you know, we take every game like it's the same. You know, every game matters and every game's the same and all that. And then he lost to Auburn. And then from that point on, like it's never been that again. You know, um, he's been locked in and he gets it. You know, this is Hugh Freeze's first Iron Bowl. And Hugh's still, you know, I think Hugh's a good coach. Got things done. Obviously, at Ole Miss beat Nick Saban a couple of times back-to-back seasons. One of the only coaches to do that. Um, And then went to Liberty and, and was good there. And he's brought in to win this game. And they're going to have a good game plan against Alabama on Saturday. Next Saturday. But there's only so much that a game plan is going to going to do. Bama's got better players all over the field. They got a better defense. If Auburn doesn't take care of business in the first half, think about the second half adjustments that Alabama makes. And they did it again today. This is one of the best Alabama teams I can ever remember in a day and age where it's dominated by offense. To see the way that the defense makes adjustments. Uh, the good thing is Chris Braswell will be back. You know, he got he got kicked out of the game for a targeting call. And it, and it felt like, to me, you know, it'd be like if Alabama played, you know, like a high school team, you know, and I, I'm no disrespect to Chattanooga, but they were moving so slow at the beginning of the game compared to Alabama. Braswell, I mean, just I, I think he was surprised that he got that clean of a lick on the quarterback. And out of the game, he went on his senior day. But it's not the end of the world, man. I mean, you just, you know, you got more games left. You got you got the Iron Bowl. Then all of a sudden, you you go down to uh, Atlanta and you, you play in that one. And then you at least got a bowl game and hopefully the college football playoff. So, all right. So I think Saban's about ready. We're going to here. We're going to throw him on right now. So let's let's get him in and, and see what he has to say. It's exciting to hear from Coach. I'm sure he's going to talk all about this thing. Here he is. Here he comes. Put him in right now. So really pleased with the way the guys, you know, came out and, you know, played today. Uh, these are the kind of games that, you really want to maintain your intensity, kind of keep trying to improve, trying to get better. Um, I thought we had a pretty good week of practice, and I thought it carried over in the game in terms of our ability to execute and do the things that we need to do. And I'd say about 98% of the time we had, you know, the right intensity. There was one drive there on defense you know, where they scored a touchdown, where we made a couple of mistakes and uh, made a couple other mistakes that, you know, led to big plays on their part. But for the most part, you know, I was really pleased. I thought Jalen played really, really well in the game, starting out like 10 for 10 or something. And uh, we made some explosive plays, which were designed and practiced all week based on how they play and what they do. So it's always good to see when you practice something and then you go out and execute it in the game. And it works out exactly like you planned. And uh, some of those things did. Players did a good job of executing. And, you know, uh, Burton had a good day today with some big plays. And, uh, we got to play a lot of players, which I think is something that, um, you know, a lot of these guys, man, they work hard all year long. They don't get a lot of positive self-gratification. Some of them don't even get to dress for games. We dressed everybody who was healthy today, I think 134 guys. 
and got to play a, a, a ton of guys and um, always happy to be able to do that. So uh, it's good for their development. It's good for their experience. And uh, obviously uh, they can learn and grow from that as well. But just having the opportunity to play in a game in Bryant-Denny Stadium has got to be a great experience for some of these guys. And we certainly appreciate the work that they do all year to help the other players get ready to play. So for them to get to play today was really um, special to me. Yeah, hey, Coach. We, uh, we saw Caleb Downs coming on punt returns. Just what kind of progress has he made there, and what would the decision? Um, you know, we got confidence in him. We got confidence in IB. I got confidence in Kool Aid. Um, you know, but you know, we we just you know he should have returned the first one, uh, and Fair caught it, and then he shouldn't even have fielded the second one, and he fumbled it. So you know, sometimes you know when you're in that position. Um, you know, confidence is really, really important, and we got to get his confidence back. And Caleb's got confidence, so obviously did a great job on the, the middle return that we ran today, made somebody miss and hit it up to shoot. And the guys did a good job of, you know, fitting and finishing on their blocks, and I only had to beat the punter and did a good job of that. Yeah. Yeah, last game today for uh, Will Riker here, Brian Denny. When you look back on his career, I mean, what, what do you remember it as and just what stands out to you? Fantastic, man. I don't know that anybody's had a more productive career relative to what their role is, what their job is, what they're supposed to do in terms of his consistency, his performance, the way he's improved, you know, th through the years, his mindset, his leadership, and how he affects the other specialists on our team and how he's helped them grow and develop. So, you know, Will's been a great asset to the organization for a long time and done his job about as well as anybody could expect somebody to do it. Yeah, Chris Braswell went up early with the targetings. That a tough play thing, man. Was a coaching point on that one for him? Well, you know, we keep telling guys you got to keep your eyes up. You got to see what you hit. You never want to hit anybody with your head down. I thought, you know, it was, his head was up, but you can't hit the quarterback in the head either. So, um, you know, we just keep working on it. Um, we had one of those last week where we hit the quarterback in the head and obviously the targeting today. So it's something that we need to focus on. But I think, you know, when players see these things happen, I think it's a good learning opportunity for everybody that plays on defense. Left, Scott. Nick, I know you got five of comparisons, but I'm curious as to how you view this team and its growth and improvement during a season when you think about other teams you've had here. Well, you know, it's always the goal that your team grows and develops. And uh, obviously, I think, you know, this team started, you know, sort of not like we wanted. Uh, and, um, you know, but I think a lot of guys have made a huge difference in the development of this team. Um, you know, Jalen's growth and development, confidence, uh, ability to execute, take what the defense gives has, you know, sort of transformed our offense into, you know, being something that's um, very productive. Uh, I think it's increased the confidence of everybody else that plays around them. Uh, the offensive line has made significant improvement. Uh, defensively, you know, we've had guys in and out, key guys. Um, you know, Devontae Lawson is kind of the leader of the front seven. Um, you know, keys to safety, makes a lot of calls in the secondary. Uh, I think there's a lot of things that we can continue to grow and develop and improve on defense where we communicate better and do things better. So um, I, don't, I don't make comparisons to other teams. You know, we've had some other teams that started out great and didn't finish strong. Uh, and I think, um, you know, we got a two-game season left here, uh, and I think we need to focus on how we finish and how we continue to improve and how we continue to have the right mindset to be able to execute uh, regardless of the circumstances, where, regardless of who we're playing or where we're playing, and that's what our focus is going to be this week. Tony? Coach, we didn't see Kobe Prentice today, and also uh, Key Robinson. It seemed like he left a little bit with an injury at the end. Do you yeah, know what they Q, Q, Q's fine. He just had a stinger. Um, Kobe Prentice strained his hamstring in practice this week. He probably could have played in the game, but um, – you know, you always risk re-injury in those things. So in, hopefully in the next few days, he'll get his strength back up to where that's not a risk. And, um, you know, that's, so that's why he didn't play today. 
What did you see of Ty Simpson in this game, and also what was your perspective on the uh, the ball coming out early at the end zone? I mean, do I have to comment on that? I mean, every coach says cross the goal line and hand the ball to the official. So, but again, that's a learning experience for everybody too. And, um, you know, but I mean, Caleb Downs wasn't carrying the ball right on his touchdown. He's carrying it in one hand, swinging it around. All right, so um, that's going to be a learning experience for him. So, but I thought Ty played, you know, well today. Uh, and the opportunity that he's had the last two weeks to play has certainly probably improved his confidence. And, um, you know, it's good that he gets some experience. So if he needs to play, he's going to be able to go in there and execute. Two more, Matt. What did you think of how Justice Haynes played at running back today? Justice is a really good player. Uh, probably hadn't got as many opportunities as we'd like for him to because of the depth of that position. But um, I, I was very pleased with the way he played. He made an outstanding run for a touchdown at the end of the game. Um, but, you know, 19 did a heck of a job blocking for him downfield so that he could score a touchdown. But um, Justice has done a really good job all year long, and we have lots of confidence in him. You already hit on Will Riker, but this senior class as a whole, just what have they meant to this program coming in during COVID, winning a championship, and then kind of being the leaders of this season's team? Yeah, these seniors have done a great job of um, representing the program, first of all, representing the university on and off the field. Um, really good group group of fine young men that I am very proud of the way they've developed personally, academically, the success that they've had, you know, in school and developing a career off the field and w what they've contributed to the team. Um, you know, some of these guys have been fantastic leaders, set a great example. You know, the one thing that's been really, really good um, over the years for us, and, and these guys did a fantastic job of that as well, is the older guys embracing the younger guys that come into the program. You know, in some places that doesn't happen, but it always happens here. It's very helpful to the development of our young players. We always have a lot of young players who contribute um, because our team turns over faster, guys going out for the draft and all that kind of stuff. So these guys have done a phenomenal job of embracing the young players on our team and helping them grow and develop and done a fantastic job of representing our program. All right, thank you. All right, thank you. All right, there you heard it. The one and only Coach Nick Saban uh, joining the uh, press after the game and Alabama's 66 to 10 win. Let's go to the phone lines and talk to our buddy Chad Anderson, who was uh, watching the game today and uh, get his take on things. Chad, how's it going? Chad. Hmm. Gotta love the phone lines. Um, anyway, we'll get Chad back on and uh and and hear from him here in a second. See if he'll call back in. Nick Saban talked about the punt returns and he kind of answered that question we were wondering. He said that, uh, you know, that he thought um, Kool-Aid, it was a confidence thing. And so, you know, interesting enough, um, that answered it. Chad, are you there? So weird. Try to reset these. Can you hear me now? Chad. Anyway, he said that he thought that um, that it was one of those deals where the um, they felt like that the, the 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 ability was there. It was just a confidence issue. And so you know, we'll see if that's part of this. You know, is it confidence uh, or not? 
All right, we got this connected. We're going to connect back to the... Uh, Thank you for calling Colin Studios host and call screener line. Please enter your show or meeting number and press pound. Get this back going again. Enter your six-digit PIN number. Welcome, host. You are now in the host oh, room and can manage your room. callers from the Colin Studio web Let's interface. See if this works. Chad! Chad. Nick. All right. Nick. <laughs> Did you like that? I, like every 65 <laughs> of us here? Hey, 65 of you guys that are there, give us 65 thumbs up for my ability to call back into the call in line. <laughs> I wonder why the phones weren't ringing. What's up, dude? Man, uh, Alabama's offense. How are you? Yeah, it's good. Yeah, I mean, that was... Uh... Kind of what we thought, right? I mean, the, the good the good thing on a game like this, Vic, is we've seen in the past, and it was against Chattanooga seven years ago, we've seen where Alabama has come out before and not done what they should have done. And thank God that wasn't the case today. Yeah, they, they took off from the very first offensive play, right? Uh, the deep ball to Jermaine Burton. So they never let their foot off the gas, really. Um, Everybody got a shot and got to rotate through, and you know, that was that was the game Alabama needed. They didn't need to to leave any kind of doubt or room for discussion uh, with the committee or anyone um, after today. No, then they didn't. I mean, this I feel like this team, and and you know I've talked right. about this before. I feel like this team's locked in. I mean, I feel like they they had their struggles at the beginning of the year, and they know how fragile this season is. And they're fighting their asses off to protect it. They are. Uh, Malachi Moore said it in an interview. I forgot which week it was. It was maybe before LSU. Um, but these guys understand, like, hey, this is this is now every week's an elimination game. Right. Every week is elimination. And so there there is no more. And, you know, that's – that's kind of like the good and the bad sometimes with college football is you you basically get one freebie a lot of times and, and you're able to lose once, but if you lose twice, you're done. Um, but the only the, that that's a good thing for Alabama. The only, the only thing that sucks when you go undefeated is a team like Georgia because of how many teams are up there this year. Like think about it, if you're a Georgia fan, you don't get the freebie. Because if you're 12 and 0 and you lose to Alabama, you might still miss the college football playoff because there may be too many other teams already up there. Right, right. So right. Uh, Alabama, though, I I love where Bama's at, man. They're peaking at the right time. The offense has figured it out. They're playing with much more confidence. Tommy Reed feels more confident. It shows. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the defense has been stellar all year long, but this team is clicking at a very, very good time and. For the most part, they're healthy, and the few guys who are a little nicked up, we expect them back over the next two weeks. So, you know, Bama is in a really good spot right now. Uh, let's talk about Kool Aid. Another issue at punt return, and then uh, Caleb Downs came in, took one to the house. Uh, Coach Saban didn't like the uh, Deion Sanders um, back in the Falcon days toting the rock like a loaf of bread on the way into the end zone. I liked it because he scored. Uh, but he said it was confidence. And we've kind of debated this. You know, I have. I said, is it confidence? Or are you worried about your draft status getting hurt? Um, are you worried about making a mistake? He said it was confidence. Um, so we saw someone else back there, and, um, you know, and it worked out. Now, I don't know that you want someone being back there in Auburn that hasn't done it a whole lot, but uh, your thoughts on that? Well, it's funny. I got a text from a friend of mine uh, after that fumble on the second or third punt of the day uh, from Chattanooga. And, you know, we talk about it, Nick, and I bring it up all the time. Auburn is what I call the haunted mansion. It's the <laughs> house of horrors. There's always some bullshit. Every year, man, every other year, always some BS taking place on the plane. And he texts me, and he's so right. You know, you, you kind of look like, all right, where is it going to come from next week? Like, what is what, what I call the shit storm? 
where where are we going to have to overcome or survive something? And he nailed it. He's like, Kool-Aid's going to be that guy next week that muffs the punt in a tie game at our own point. Please tell me. I, I don't want to hear that. I mean, I know. I don't want to hear it either. But, it's, <laughs> but that's, if you look at the whole team right now, though, that's the spot, right? Yeah. That's the spot where you're like, man. It's, you hold your breath every time the kick is in the air. So I, I personally would rather have somebody else back here. Well, we did today, and it and it paid off. Um, the Terps are trying to upset Michigan right now. They're they're down 24, 31-24 with a minute twenty seven seconds left. Some big games tonight, but let's just keep talking. Did they get the ball back? Uh, no, I'm putting uh while you're talking, I'm putting the the TV on because um, I'm going to get through these calls on this post game show, we just heard from, from coach Saban and, and now officially like just to let everyone know tomorrow, I mean, we're going to start kicking the content. It's coming. I mean, tomorrow be, it starts the busiest two weeks of this channel because we're going to beat Auburn's ass. And then we're going to go down there yeah. and take care of Georgia. And we're going to cover that shit like a blanket here, you know? So um, I, I can tell you right now, I'm glad that, that I've got double barreled uh, kegeration action behind me because I'm going to need it for all of the shows and stuff we're doing here. Because this is what you do this shit for. This is what it's all yeah. about, man. It's Auburn it's Auburn and Georgia for a chance to go to the championship. Well, yeah. at least, you know, you you're, know you're I mean. spot on. I mean, this is, yeah, this, this is what you do the whole season of coverage for. Like, if you're, if you're a fan, if you're a coach, if you're a player, if you're in the media, like getting to November 25th and and saying, all right, we're here. There's two weeks left in the season, and those two weeks determine if we play for a national championship again. Like, you couldn't ask for a better position. No. I mean, technically, I guess you could be – but this is what you do it for. This is the whole point. It's what you agonize over in games. It's what you watch in the off season with recruiting and spring practice and a day games, and you talk with your buddies at the water cooler at the office. Oh yeah, you talk shit to your neighbors. Like it's all for this. These final two weeks, man. Like this is what it's all. Chad, about. I got to interrupt you, and it I've got to tip my. I've got to tip my glass in the whole calendar. Right. Let me tip my glass to Thundar the Barbarian. Thanks for all you do. Appreciate you letting me feel a little closer to T-Town here in Oklahoma. Roll Tide, Thundar the Barbarian, from uh, Chad and myself, man, and I appreciate the – we appreciate the super chat, man. Roll Tide, brother, in Oklahoma today. I just tilted one that. back. Chad doesn't Oklahoma drink, so – Oklahoma, I think, held on today, too, speaking of Oklahoma. Did they? Okay. Well, thank you. Thank you, man. Love the super they chats. Did. They had a tough one with BYU. Yeah, thank you, Thundar. But anyway, thank pick you. it back up. When Thundar drops the super chat for 20 bucks, we stop and we tilt, we tip the glass. We tip it. <laughs> so, so, Absolutely. Yeah, you know that, Chad. Even, Always. Even, as so, even sober Chad knows that. All right. Um, let's, so let's, yeah. let's get ready for the next step here which is uh, the things that Alabama is going to have to do between now and next week. We saw Ty Simpson. The guy's gotten a lot better. He doesn't look like a scared cat anymore. We saw a little Dylan Lottergan in the game. So, I mean, I think that that tells you something right there because I don't think we saw, unless I missed it, we didn't see Buckner. Um, and nope. we also saw Jalen Milrow come out again and just flex. 10 for his first 10, take care of business, move the ball down the field. The guy's not the guy's not messing around anymore, man. Like he's already been through that. I love that about him. So now we get ready for next week. Although th tonight could be the reason we can't start previewing anything tonight, which we would love to do. I, I think you and I would both love to get on here and start talking Iron Bowl. It's because we got to let the rest of the games play out. You know, being number eight, Alabama yeah. to me, Chad, right. isn't number eight talent. I think they're the, I th honestly, I think they're one of yeah. the two best teams in the country right now. But, but the, the polls don't yeah, tell us there, that. There, so. there have been, no, there, there have been years past 
where you look around and you're like, man, I, I don't really know how good Alabama is against one or two of these teams. Or, But right now, I, I would say, as Bama being ranked eight, I'm with you. There's not a single team that I worry about Alabama playing. Alabama could be any single team uh, with no problem at this point, the way they're playing football. There have been years in the past, and I, you know, you say, well, that's easy because Alabama's loaded with talent. Of course, they could pretty much always beat anybody. But there have been years in the past where you watch an Alabama offense or a defense, and it's like, man, I don't really want any part of, you know, this team or that team. Right. I hope we avoid them or whatever the case may be. This year, with this team and the way they're playing right now, zero fear playing anyone. Right. Zero fear playing anybody. That's how good and how, how well they're playing at the moment. Awesome, dude. Well, look, you get back to what you're doing. We got some calls stacked up now. I will see you tomorrow, and we will see you guys tomorrow because tomorrow is when we start coming out like Rocky Balboa, uh, ready to beat Clubber Lang, ready to beat Drago. You know what I'm saying? Ready to take care of Tommy Gunn. Ready to beat Apollo. It's Mumbama. That's it, it's it's about getting back to that championship and it, and the it's all the bullshit's over now. Iron Bowl, SEC championship game, college football playoff. Roll Tide. Nick enjoyed it. I'm ready. And I want all the fans and listeners and viewers bringing it this week. Yeah. They got to bring it. This is it. This is what you do it for. So I expect a lot this week. I'm pumped, man. It's going to be a fun two weeks. We'll talk to you soon. All right. Roll Tide, brother. All right. Let's go right back to the phone lines again and get you guys in. Um, who's this and where are you calling from? Hey, Mick. It's Adam calling from Georgia. How you doing? Adam, Roll Tide, brother. Great, great to have you on today, man. Roll tight. Thanks so much, man. Great to talk to you. I'm just going to make uh, three brief points. Um, number one, I don't think Alabama should be scheduling these games. I mean, UT Chattanooga is so bad that it's a waste of our time. Players could get injured. And I don't see how it prepares us for all, but I'd rather see a shorter season than playing these cupcakes. And the second point is, um, I think we're the top two teams in the country, too. Michigan there's no way Michigan is better than us, UW or Oregon. And as far as Georgia goes, I'm watching the game right now with Tennessee. I don't know why people struggle so much to cover Brock Bowers. I mean, <laughs> can't they bracket him and put a play? I mean, yeah, I my final question for you is, um, yeah, me too. Um, my final question for you is, what do you think of uh, the Auburn game? What's your prediction? Well, first off, I was thinking about you when I saw uh, Chris Braswell just absolutely obliterate the Chattanooga quarterback because they yeah. looked like they were running in slow motion. You know, like, like, and I felt bad for Chris. Like, you've been playing the best of the best, right? You might have, like, LSU's quarterback might win the Heisman. You know, Kentucky's quarterback's a good right. quarterback, Devin Leary. This guy and that offense and that defense are just like a, it's such a drop off in talent and speed. Yeah. You know, and the guy gets kicked. And I'm like, if this guy's kicked out for the Auburn game, you got to be kidding me. But it didn't happen. It was in the first half, luckily. Now, if that had been the second half, he'd have been out for the first half, right? Uh, so I agree with you on right. that. I, I don't know, man. Like, we talked about it on the tailgate show last night. It's such a juggling act, you know? You can if you can pick up like right. ten reasons why they're good, ten reasons why they're bad. But once you get to the twelve game playoff, it might not make sense to play these games, like you said, because if you because if you play a better opponent and things don't go well, you and you're a good team, you could still probably get in. Now let me get to the Auburn game. Right. I, I'm I I'm man. I feel like this Alabama team is ready, man. I just I just feel like these guys are locked and loaded. I don't think Auburn's a, a good football team. I think they're okay, but I don't think they're good. And I think they're going to struggle against Alabama's defense. They're going to scheme Alabama. They're going to pick some some stuff. They'll have a little success in the game. But I think that Alabama's offense is going to score on them, and I think if Alabama builds a lead, it'll look a lot like LSU. And I think they're going to go in there and do that. 
you know, I, I just feel like there's a big talent mm-hmm. um, difference. But if Alabama, if Alabama F's around and it's close late, you know, it gets really loud in there. Um, I, I think the first half could be close. Yeah. And I think Alabama comes out in the second half and puts the metal, the pedal to the metal and takes care of business. Yeah, I think um, I don't think the Auburn game is going to be close, and I think the SEC championship is going to be the national championship. If we beat Georgia, we're going to win the Natty, and I think that's going to happen. So, roll tide. Always great talking to you, Mick. The great caller, man. One of our one of our all Americans, brother. Thank you for calling and being part of our channel. Let's go back to the phone lines again. That's our buddy Adam in Georgia. Uh, who's this, and where are you calling from? Hey, Nick, it's Ice, man. Ice, it would not be appropriate to do a show without you calling in, brother. Ice, Ice, baby, what's up, dude? Oh, yeah, I was, I was, I was, I was going to miss it. I was handling traffic out here at work, um, but I, I, I was good. I was able to call. Um, you know, I don't really know if we can take much from this game, except, you know, when the twos and threes got in, it was, it was nice to see them get some reps. Uh, I hope you'd agree, but... I will say Caleb Downs really brought a spark to uh, returning the punts. Wasn't yeah. that kind of nice to see? Oh, it was beautiful. It's beautiful because, you know, we've, yeah. we've all been in this situation before, right? You're really good at something, and then something happens, and you either lose your confidence or whatever, and then somebody else does it, and you're like, oh, shit, you know, I got to go out here and, like, handle this. You know, it's like being, like, for me, like doing play-by-play. You know, somebody else comes in, and they're really good, your game gets a lot better. Your focus is a lot better. You're ready to go on, and you don't want them not to do good. You just want to come on and jump in and like a tag team, you know, like like you get tagged in, you're going to come in and bring the energy, man. You're going to, you know, and it's like that in a lot of different things. I just think that Kool Aid's focus is going to be a lot different this week because here's Caleb Downs comes in and takes it to the house. And, and, and Kool-Aid just can't figure out when to catch it, when not to catch it. Now he's fumbling. You know, he looks indecisive. He doesn't look like he wants to be back there. And Saban said it was confidence, and I hope that's the case. But, I mean, there's a lot going on. I mean, it's it's one of the toughest jobs on the entire football field. And uh, and he's tasked with that job. But I was I, I loved seeing K- – this was the right time to pull the, the, to pull the court on downs because, you know, at least he's got some experience next week against Auburn. And I think Auburn's going to be punting the ball a lot. Oh, yeah. They, they got an all-American punter out there, don't they? They, they do it all the time. Um, but it, you, you're right, though. I think I actually, that's what I've been hearing a lot of, was it, it's all confidence. And, and, you know, when you look at the way it was panning out for Kool-Aid, I think it was a lot of confidence. And, and all it really does take is, is that one – explosive play like you know get get all the way like to the end zone or something like that and you saw that with Caleb Downs this week and I wonder if he might be the one moving forward or we might see them swapping out um either way I just want the best man to go out there and do it and and whoever it is I mean heck it could be Kendrick Law and that'll be awesome yeah um I'm with you man uh, but I, I want them to go out there and play the best yeah well when they have the uh, and another thing is is uh well, hold that right there. When they had the quarterback battle at the beginning of the year and people were on mm-hmm. here and they're debating, you know, why this guy or why that guy, I didn't give a crap. I just wanted the right guy. You know, I just want the guy that's going to give us the best chance Amen. to win the football game. You know, and it's like if it's Caleb Downs, if it's Kool-Aid, if it's somebody that I don't even I'm not even thinking of, put him in there because all of the little things that you do get you to the point where you win these games and you're getting in the games now, you know, you get past Auburn or maybe even next week, you know, think about the last time we were down there, little things eventually led to winning that football game in four overtimes, you know, you go and play, uh, you know, at jo- you play Georgia and Atlanta and it's going to be little things that could lead to winning 2008 sec championship game. I think Bama beats Florida. They made four mistakes in the football game that I can remember. One was Javi Arenas, who's one of the best returners ever, stepped out of bounds on a punt, you know, and, and instead of having him do what he does and maybe even take it to the house, he, we're, we're, we got awful field position. You know, it was a couple things here and there. Little things matter. So that's why it's important to find the person that's the most comfortable back there 
and the best back there returning the kicks. All right, keep going. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And you pretty much said what I was thinking, too, because it's all really where it shines is on special teams, too, or where, where the small things are really going to count. Um, it, from, from just a simple fact of, of putting the ball within the five-yard line on a punt, you know, and, and not letting them return it. So you're absolutely right on that. But the, the next one I wanted to bring up is you, you remember about 10 years ago, there was this movie that came out. Um, it was like one of those horrible sci-fi movies called Sharknado. <laughs> yeah, I do. You know what I'm talking about? Yes, I do. The sharks were like flying well, in the air. So I, I, have a, I have a new movie idea for you. The Bead Nato. Oregon State Beavers and Iowa State Cyclones combined <laughs> together to, to help Alabama out tonight. <laughs> Let's hope. Let's hope. Yeah. Yeah, I'm telling you right now, I am, I am the biggest Iowa State and Oregon State fan. And uh, I really hope that they, they pull off some upsets, you know, on behalf of Alabama football tonight. Um, and, and the Beeb NATO is coming into town, and it's going it's gonna to tear through Washington Huskies and uh, them Texas Longhorns. So that, that's all I really want to say. i got to get back to work. Um, I had not really much else to take from this game. I mean, it's basically a scrimmage. But uh, hopefully next week we can, uh, we can be cheering on Alabama after a, a, a nice victory. Uh, probably 21 point, 28 point victory over Auburn. I'd, so love, roll tide. I'd love to see that, Iceman. Roll Tide, brother. Have a safe night at work, and we'll talk to you after the game next week, man. We'll we'll find a way to make that happen, even if you're uh, doing your job. And uh, for all of you guys hanging out with us uh, on the show, man, uh, another great night here on the channel. And I'm I'm just going to tell you right now, tomorrow, it's it's uh, go time here. You know, it's go time here. We'll have the Sunday rollback. We're going to preview the Iron Bowl. Uh, we're going to hit it hard all week, man. And then we're going to hit it all hard again next week because not just being like, Hey, I got an Alabama channel, you know, I'm from, you know, uh, crater of the moon, Iowa somewhere, you know, I got graduated from Alabama, love Alabama football like you guys. And I'm ready to see them freaking roll. And I think you guys know exactly what I'm talking about. This is what you do this for, to get ready for this experience. So we're going we're gonna to talk to you guys all week, man. Thank you for the comments. Thank you for the super chats. Um, always great to see so many of you guys on here. I feel like, uh, you know, we, we kind of got our own little, our own little cr- group here, our own family, if you will, Jersey Dolphins. You know, thank you, man. And, and I love the fact that you guys that are regulars here, are saying, hey, if you're first time, man, like and subscribe, thumbs up, you know, be part of this. Hit the bell so you know when we're doing shows. Um, Thundar, I actually lost this game. I thought Michigan was going to win. <laughs> Maryland covered that 19-point spread. Pretty funny. Uh, a couple of my friends are actually at that game today. I'm really surprised. Um, Steven, thank you, man, for, for commenting and, and on all you guys. Adam for calling in, Chad jumping on. Um, tonight we got some big games. We'll find out what happens. You know, like I, th- I I'm, I'm with, I'm looking for a, a, a beaver tornado, you know, like the beavers win and Iowa state wins. Can you imagine how, how just comfortable that would be? Because then you just take care of business. But, but for this Alabama football team, they just got to keep winning the games ahead of them. But this game that coming up next, you know, forget about, all the things that you can win, the championship and all that. You just want to beat these guys because you just don't want to hear them run their mouths for a year around here. You know, they they win this and then it'd be like they won the Super Bowl. So we're going to preview it and, and we're going to talk about it. Guys, like and subscribe to the channel if you're not already part of it. Um, and again, uh, thanks for being here. Roll Tide.